So I'm famous in England as being the bin man turned professor, as you can see in this Daily Mail headline. Uh, the working class lad who became a charity CEO. The boy who left home at 15, who dropped out of school for a bit, and whose family had no one had uh, been in higher education and who got an OBE from the Queen, I actually got it from Prince Charles, um, for services to social mobility. So I'm very proud of the, the journey I've had, but I think these stories are really dangerous. These stories of individual achievement. And why do I, why do I think that? Well, firstly, I, I think we fall into deficit mindset. We belittle people who are bin men. I was very proud to be a bin man, actually. And in some ways, I would argue that bin men are more important than professors. <laughs> professors spout a lot of rubbish, but bin men pick, pick rubbish up. So, um, so we've got to be careful in how we judge people from different backgrounds. And I believe education systems should be nurturing children that go on to do many different things, not just ac academic things. The other thing about this story is it suggests, suggests that we need to change class to improve our, our, our lives. And I have one thing in common with David Beckham, that's we changed our accents. So I had quite a London sort of Cockney accent, as David Beckham did when he was younger. But both of us have changed our accents. And that's subconsciously, I think, that we have tried to fit into the middle class world that we now inhabit. And I, I think I worry about that because I feel like um, I'm a middle class clone, but I don't quite feel at home in the new world that I've, I, I come to. So, so we, should, we should celebrate all classes, actually, and we should look at how our systems are genuinely inclusive rather than making people like me change who they are. The other thing about this story is it emphasizes individual achievement. And I can tell you my life is the product of collective endeavor. Uh, it was an Uncle Michael who long passed away, my mum's brother, who was a gas meter reader um, and used all his savings to get me through college. It was my mate's mum and dad that gave me a place when I, when I needed to stay somewhere. It was the teacher who took me under her wing that gave me the confidence to apply to university. So we are all products of collective endeavour. I think one politician once said there's no such thing as society. I do not agree. I think we are a collective uh, society and we are products of each other. The final thing about this story is that I was a very academic uh, young man. And if I'd been more vocational or more creative, I'm not sure if I would have flourished in the education system that we had then or, or even uh, now. In, in fact, um, I, 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 as someone from my background overcompensates. I wanted to do the most academic thing you could do. I actually did a PhD in theoretical physics. <laughs> I don't mention it at parties because the conversation <laughs> goes dead. But it's because I just wanted to do the hardest thing and prove everyone that I was worthy of, of my place. Um, but if I'd been more vocational or creative, I'm not sure I would have uh, flourished a, a, as much. It's taken me a lifetime to realize this. But in my view, it's not just getting more people like me to make these journeys, it's actually changing the system itself that matters. And I would describe the system as something like this. It's a very uh, one-sided playing field. I call it the uh, rigged race of education. And it's partly because we have that very narrow academic criteria that we obsess about. It's easily measurable, but it's also easily gameable by those elites that keep replicating themselves from, from generation to generation. So we need to think about how we celebrate all human talents in, in our education uh, system. I talk a lot about leveling the playing field in my work. I actually think it's more about changing the game, changing the rules of the game, which I'll come to. I believe that many of our classrooms and curricula are biased to certain people from certain cultural and class backgrounds. And we need to do a far better job in making them genuinely uh, inclusive. We are facing so many issues, so many challenges um, in our education systems, the crisis and absenteeism, the stark achievement gaps that you will all be aware of. And I think we need a reset. Not me again. It's called the equity approach. Uh, sorry, I'm promoting my book here. Um, and what do I mean by the equity approach? Well, I think it's a fundamental reset of education. A curriculum of equity 
would be looking at our curriculum and celebrating the scientists and the poets and the writers that come from working class or different cultural backgrounds. I don't think we do enough. It would have the um, arts and the sports fitted into our busy school days that have been squeezed out by our obsession with academe. Many of the young people from my sort of backgrounds do not get those opportunities outside schools. I would challenge some of the class biases that we have in the examination system. In England, there's the famous geography question set on a ski slope. I can tell you that's alien territory for someone like me. I missed out on the ski trip at school because my mum and dad were splitting up at the time. So it's kind of a, an emotional reaction for me as well as one that would, you would need to have more cognitive uh, load, if you like, to understand that question, to put it into context. There's the maths questions about uh, money and savings when many children in our classrooms have not got coats to get them through the winter. So we need to really think about those, those examination questions. The language of equity is challenging ourselves about the terms we use on disadvantage. In this book, we don't use the, the term disadvantaged pupil. We use the term children from under-resourced backgrounds. It sounds like a subtle difference, but it's so important. As soon as we use that term disadvantaged pupil, we label that child. We blame them implicitly for their disadvantage. I would prefer to imply and suggest that it's the systematic barriers that, have printed, that pre pre prevented them getting on in, in, in uh, the classroom. So language is really, really important. The third thing is the pedagogy of equity. And here, I think we need to look at our classroom interactions to reflect on our unconscious biases that we all have that mean we interact less with those children that look less like us or are not as like us as, as, uh, as being middle class. So we need to challenge ourselves on unconscious biases. We also need to be explicit about the cultural capital that is present in every classroom. Middle class parents will train their children to advocate for themselves, to know the language of the classroom. If you come from a different background, and I've had to learn all this over the years, then you're just not going to be seen or know how to play the game. Again, we need to be more explicit about those things. So what would I say to a system leader? I'd say, um, give teachers a break. Uh, we can't solve everything in this education system. We can up our game. We can really do more for children. But please declare a war on child poverty, and then we'll do our bit. Teaching is one of the most sophisticated things human beings can do. Respect it. But don't lay all of society's ills at the school gates. For a school leader, I would say celebrate non-academic uh, achievements. The, the, the act of generosity in a classroom, the apprenticeships that your children are doing, the local jobs that your pupils have gone on to do. Get them back to talk to your, your other pupils. And for the teacher, I would carve out a little bit of time to give positive and authentic feedback to the parents of children who come from under-resourced backgrounds like me. So beware the American dream tales from people like me, the bin men turned professor. My dream is of an education system that nurtures all talents, people from all backgrounds who go on to do many things in life. Thank you very much.